What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna talk about one of the biggest and most common mistakes I see with email marketers, or really content marketers in general, and that's being afraid to sell in your emails. So there's this idea that you have to, you know, only provide value for a certain period of time, whether it's over the course of several weeks or several months, um, and then when you finally earn someone's trust, then you can finally sell to them, and if you try to do it too soon, it's gonna turn people away, and that couldn't be further from the the truth. So yes, I agree that providing quote unquote value is a great way to build an audience. Um, but at the same time, people know the game at this point and they know when you're creating content that you're doing it with the intention to sell, even if you put out content that doesn't sell at all and you're only providing value, they know that that's what you're leading to. Um, at least they assume that. And there's nothing wrong with that because ideally the thing that you're selling is actually valuable in itself, but we'll get to that. So First, I just want to give you a quick example, you know, why this comes off disingenuous to people. Um, because again, everyone kind of knows the game when it comes to content marketing, like they know what the purpose is. They know if you're emailing them, you're not just doing it out of the kindness of your heart and that you are trying to sell to them. And that's okay, because why do you think they signed up to your list in the first place, right? They're giving you permission to sell to them. And, but it just comes off weird. And it's kind of like if you, you know, like you ever see the guy who tries to befriend the girl, even though he really wants to date her he doesn't tell her that up front he acts like he wants to just be friends right and he tries to get closer and closer with her and then finally he'll either uh, you know make his move or he'll you know reveal his true intentions or hope that maybe someday she expresses her interest and then that will be his chance right and what happens is that just creeps girls out and not only that but again it's very disingenuous because you you showed up acting one way and then it turns out you your intentions were actually very different and you know there's no surprise that women can usually tell when you are doing that when you are taking that approach and if they can't then it's because you went way too much into the friend zone area but there's that's a reason why we all kind of know that once someone has been friend zoned that it's hard to get out of it and it's because people don't like to mix the two you know if you are interested in her then and you wanted to be more effective at actually dating women then you would want to just make that clear up front and take the risk that maybe you get rejected because for one, uh, you're being way more honest and uh, you're providing a, a much more fun experience assuming that you have, that you're an, you know, an attractive mate and you uh, are genuinely interested in her and, and she has some level of interest in you. Because if you think about it, if you just try to do the switch and bait where you try to pretend to be her friend for a while and all of a sudden switch things up, you are removing the fun that she gets to experience in being pursued. Again, assuming she's interested in the first place, um, you're taking away that fun. Like you're, you're taking away that, that part of the experience for her where she gets to feel that, um, feel the feeling of being pursued, but also she knows that she has the ability to turn you down and then, but she decides not to, right? And there's that kind of, uh, that some people might think is a little bit of discomfort. That's actually where the chemistry sparks. That's what makes it fun. That's what makes it exciting. And it's the same thing when it comes to selling is that if you try to just provide value, 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 and, and act like, oh, you know, we don't have anything to sell. We don't have anything to sell. And then all of a sudden you come up with this big pitch. It's like, oh, okay. So you were lying the whole time you were just lying. And now it's hard to even take your pitch seriously because it just seems like you're dishonest and you were uh, misleading people the whole time. So it's like, well, okay, if we can't trust what you said when you were supposedly just providing value, how can we trust you now that whenever you're selling versus the business that just tells you like upfront, like, hey, we want you to buy this stuff. But by the way, you know, if you're not ready to buy today, here's a, a bunch of free value you can have while you're considering us, but let's make no mistake about it. We are trying to sell to you. Which one are you gonna trust more? You're gonna trust the one who wasn't afraid to just tell you upfront what their intentions were. And also they weren't afraid to get rejected because most of the time people are not going to buy right on the spot and that's okay. So that's kind of, you know, big picture as far as how it, people are experiencing it. That's where, that's one of the major shortcomings of this whole idea that you have to just go this long period of time of providing value before you can finally sell. But let's talk a little bit more practically because really that's not even the biggest problem. 
because the biggest problem now is attention spans are so short that you just end up wasting a bunch of their time and your time to where people have actually moved on and stopped consuming your content before you ever got to that sales pitch anyways. And that's really the problem I see more often these days is that Again, people think that's like you have to have this long drawn out, you know, welcome nurturing series of emails before you can ever present a, an offer to anyone. And yeah, people have checked out. They've already, they're ignoring your emails and they've already moved on to the other company they were considering that wasn't afraid to give them a call to action from the very beginning. Because remember, they wouldn't have signed up for your email list if they weren't already at least somewhat interested. And it's kind of like that experience of me saying how, you know, it for the woman who's getting hit on by a guy assuming she's interested in him, it's a fun experience for her, right? It's like a fun game we get to play. And for us, when we're interested in a product, we want to be sold. Like when I am shopping for a car and I know I need a new car, I go there, I want you to put on your best sales pitch. I don't want this to be boring. I don't want to I don't want to learn a bunch of random facts that don't matter to me. I want you to make me feel excited to drive this thing every day. So I want you to bring your best sales pitch. That's what's fun about it. I, I'm already interested in it. You know, if you're trying to talk someone into something that they're not interested in. So if you're just sending out an email to someone who didn't sign up for your list, that's one thing. But for people who have signed up, they've already expressed a level of interest. So it's just not only is it silly because you're just wasting a bunch of time, it's cowardly. It just makes your makes your brand look weak, um, but it's disingenuous. So my whole thing is, and I've had to you know have this confrontation with, at least it kind of becomes that way, with um, different companies over the years and just get it in their head that it's like, it's okay to sell because ideally the thing you're selling is actually valuable, meaning that whatever product or service you're selling is something where you're not scamming people, you're actually providing them the uh, a value that's equal or greater than what they've paid, right, as far as the market value of it. Um, and that thing is hopefully making their life better or hopefully growing their business or hopefully giving them some sort of benefit that they can enjoy. And that is the value, that is providing value. Sometimes to provide value, there has to be a transaction because, for example, you can't just give products away for free to people because they cost you money to make. And the more you charge for a product, the more you can invest into the quality of that product. And, and we all know this, but for some reason, when it comes to selling our own thing or whatever, we get all scared. And it's like, just think about it. Even when it comes to a service, the more that you charge, the, the better people you can hire to deliver that service, right? So if you're, if you're in the business of making money, if, you're in, if you have something that's actually valuable, then you're going to have to charge people money for it, which means you have to confront this whole thing that you need to get comfortable selling to them. And if you're going to sell to them and you've got a list of people who have expressed interest, then it would be stupid to waste their time and waste your time by beating around the bush instead of just letting them know upfront why your offer is valuable and not shying away from the fact that it's readily available and you are here to sell it. And that again, that doesn't mean you don't you only do salesy emails. It just means that you're not afraid to sell to sell quickly. So here's what I would say is just a very simple structure for an email. Um or any piece of content really, but for an email to do this. So one thing is for every email you send, unless it's like a big site-wide Black Friday sale or whatever, <clears throat> in general, always provide value. Always just provide a little bit of value. It could be something where maybe you share a, a quote that you know just like romanticizes the moment of what they're reading about. Um, again, maybe you educate them on something. Maybe you give them a quick tip. Uh, maybe you share something entertaining. Uh, maybe you share something thought-provoking. Maybe you tell a story, whatever. And the whole point is that if they are not ready to buy today, that they don't regret opening and reading that email. It doesn't need to be this long drawn out thing. It just needs to be enough to cover that. Meaning that the person said, you know what, even if I'm not buying, I don't regret opening this email. That's all the value you need to have. Then from there, you should define the value of your offer. So you should make it clear why what you're selling is valuable to them. And then always include a call to action. A lot of people are not going to be ready to buy on the spot. But at the same time, if you have a CTA button in your email, they're not going to unsubscribe because you had a CTA button in your email. They know you're emailing them to sell to you, right? So or to, they know that you're trying to sell to them. So no one's going to be shocked when you have a call to action in your email. And if you don't have a call to action in your email, everyone who is ready to buy right then will not be presented with the opportunity. And you're like that guy who's just, you know, trying to be a friend to this girl for month after month, year after year, hoping that, oh, maybe someday she'll decide to make the move. Um, well, newsflash, while you're doing that, Giga Chad on the side is over here in her DMs and he's not afraid to make the move. It's just like your competitors in business are not 
afraid to sell to that person and they will just go ahead and, and do what's easier and go with the company that makes it a very clear and easy to make a buying decision while you're sitting around, you know, twiddling your thumbs trying to decide when you should finally ask for the sale. So you've already lost them. So every email, you just need to provide enough value to where they don't regret opening the email. You need to define the value of your offer. So if you're selling clothes, it could be could just be as simple as, you know, helping them look better, feel better, and be more confident, right? So once you've defined the value of your offer, now they have to buy it to get that value. You can't just talk about looking better, feeling better, um, and being more confident with a specific specific type of clothing if the person doesn't have that particular set of clothing to wear they have to buy it they have to get it so they can wear it so they can get that value so when you define the value of your offer you are providing value when you sell to them because they're actually receiving value again assuming you're not scamming them or anything assuming you actually believe in the stuff you with the products or services you sell that they are getting value but they're gonna have to buy it because it costs you money to make it and that's just how the world works so really I made this video because I'm just I I wanted to send this to people whenever I, this topic comes up because it comes up often where especially when I'm doing consulting with companies where people are struggling to come up with topics for their emails and a big part of it is because they think that they can't sell so they're trying to come up with all these ways to pretend they're not selling when they really just want to sell and my whole thing is like look forget all that you know mix the two together like find a conversation starter and I have videos on this on my channel, which you can search for conversation starter or search for a video about how I plan uh, email campaigns or how I plan a campaign calendar. It would go detail. It goes into detail about how I, you know, pick different marketing angles to basically start the email, which leads into the offer. And then again, you have to define the value of your offer or it just feels like they're being sold and not actually receiving anything on the other end. If you don't define the value of what they get, then how do they know what's in it for them? Um, and how are they going to feel like the call to action you then present them with is is a worthwhile thing to do. So again, the main thing here is just stop being afraid to sell in emails. There's nothing wrong with selling from the very first email. Uh, every email should have a call to action. And you, again, you have to define the value of your offers so that selling is providing value. And the two are not uh, two separate things, but the two are one and the same. And it just so happens that when you provide additional value beyond what you're selling, that that's just a bonus. That's just the entertainment. That's the education. That's all the other other stuff. Uh, so anyways, I hope that helps and I will see you in the next video.